Hi, you're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse, your host and your guide. I want to talk to you tonight about Hillary Clinton. Hillary on theology. This comes from ChristianHeadlines.com. They write in the first episode of her new podcast entitled You and Me Both with Hillary Clinton. Former Secretary of State and Pastor William J. Barber II of Greenleaf Christian Church in Goldsboro, North Carolina, spoke about justice and racism. Clinton asked, how do you see now what the church should be doing? Well, Barber responded by saying, because a lot of people are leaving the church. A lot of young people are leaving, in part because of the way they understand what Christianity has become. That Christianity has become so judgmental, so alienating, that they think to themselves, well, I don't need that. Barbara continued, young people are very open to faith that is about transformation, about love, about justice, about equality, about the essence, the essence of what it means to be people of faith. And the church must be willing to engage them in that manner. You got a Bible verse for that, Pastor? Bible pe uh, young people are open to faith that's about transformation. That's Christianity. But they also want it to be about love and justice and equality and the essence of what it means to be the people of faith. It's nebulous. They need to repent of their sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that his sacrifice on the cross was all that was necessary that paid the price for any and all who would humble themselves and thereby be indwelt by the Spirit of God. Motivated now on a higher plane to things that are far more noble. Certainly concerned about justice, but not the way these young people talk about. Talk, certainly concerned about equality, but not in the way these young people mean. It's not that these things are unimportant. It's just that they are the products. They're not the means. I'm not talking about the Bible concepts. I'm talking about the emotional concepts of these young people. If a person repents of their sin and embraces the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he means, they have repented of one thing and they have believed on the opposite, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God then takes residence in their heart, cleansing them from sin, equipping them for something far greater than anything they ever imagined. Pastor Barber is implying that these things must be present before young people become interested in church. The Bible? These young people, all young people for that matter, most young people, must be convinced of their sinful nature. All people, young or old, must be convinced of their native rebellion against God. It is something they were born with. About their desperate spiritual situation, that they are cut off from God. And they have to consider these things before they consider anything else having to do with God. If you start with transformation, you start with love or justice, equality, what are you going to get? Oh, you're going to get a social slash political form of church. It's going to be very uplifting and very meaningful to you. But you're still going to hell. Barbara goes on to say there's no way in the days in which we live the church can stay quarantined inside the four walls of a building because that's never what it was intended to do. Again, he misses the point. The church is people. People live in the world. Church buildings, church meetings exist to strengthen those people, the Christians, the true believers in the faith once delivered. It exists to equip them to live the other 163 hours every week. Barbara went on wandering outside the parameters of church to recite the traditional litany 
of the social justice purveyors, things like the genocide of First Nations people, the enslavement of African Americans, and seeing women oppressed and excluded as events that negatively impact theology. I got a news flash for you, Pastor. A change of heart changes all these things and much, much more. The problem? Our churches have, for hundreds of years, wandered outside the biblical parameters in order to either attract people or to be attractive socially or politically. And in so doing, they have, A, lost their first love, and B, they have embraced social change as though that's enough. Barber recalled what one of his professors told him as to what it means to be a Christian. He says, to be a Christian, to be born again, sprinkled, or whatever you call it, and then claim the Holy Spirit is to have a quarrel with the world's system of injustice. As far as it goes, I agree with that. I don't agree with being born again as a sprinkling or to claim the Holy Spirit, but, you know, he's, he's something other than a biblical Christian. And he goes on to say, if whatever you claim you have doesn't produce a quarrel with injustice, then your claim of it being the Spirit with the big S is suspect. That's good. However, the church does not exist to do battle with the government. Some of the most powerful and effective Christians who have ever lived lived under brutal, tyrannical regimes. Roman emperors, oriental potentates, communists, and they are said to have turned the world upside down. Clinton then contended that, quote, Jesus and justice are the same thing, and that Christians must understand how to, quote, profoundly Need, need to understand, quote, how profoundly true that simple phrase really is. You know, to say Jesus and justice are the same thing seems to me so obvious. I mean, how can you be a Bible-reading person, a church-attending person, and not understand how profoundly true that simple phrase really is, Clinton asked. In asking that question, Hillary Clinton exposed herself. She apparently does not know what a Christian is. She characterized them as Bible readers, church attenders. That's the world's view of Christianity. It's not a biblical view. And the world is never going to understand the difference. They won't understand it until or unless they have a spiritual encounter with the God of the Bible.